An important arm of this effort has been these two wonderful attorneys and um, words really cannot express um, the gratitude of Maui to them for their tireless work. I've seen how many cases and, and how they run between everything. Like to get two minutes with these guys is like a miracle because they have so many things on their plate where they're trying to make the greatest difference in saving our island. In the, in the legal system, the courts uh, only generally recognize three interests. You have a life interest, you have a liberty interest, or you have a property interest. So if you want to do something in the legal system, your issue has to be a life interest, a liberty interest, or a property interest. Uh, the Hawaii Supreme Court has recognized traditional and customary practices as a property interest. The Hawaii Supreme Court has recognized the right to cl a clean and healthful environment as a property interest. So if you want to be involved in any government process, you have to be able to articulate your interests as you, you have to say, I have a property interest. So for Claire's request for a contested case over Archaeological Services Hawaii's permit, in her letter, she, when she said she wanted a contested case, she said, that my traditional and customary practices are property interests protected by the Hawaii Constitution and under the due process clause, I'm entitled to a contested case. Phase six, Maui Lani phase six increment four is a burial ground, but it hasn't been treated as such. To date, there's up to 180 burials that have been desecrated in there. And we were looking at different pathways. How can we stop this? How can we stop this? So much heva was going on in there. And after, after praying and listening to my kupuna for about a year, I kept thinking, how, 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 can I, how can I make a difference? What can I do? And I was thinking about filing for a descendancy claim. And what I wanted to do was file through the battle, but people kept, kept telling me, no, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. But I kept studying the law. I studied the law for a year, and I just kept looking at it and praying about it. And finally, I said, I'm just going to do it. So I went into burial council. I took my genealogy. I took the mo'olelo from the Battle of Kukanilua. I tied them to the sand dunes of Wailuku. And lo and behold, the burial council um, unanimously passed my claim. So I became the first descendant the first recognized descendant in that, um, in that area. And it's, it's significant because, because nobody had been recognized, and, and that was an issue that we have on Maui in general, people not being recognized when they go forward with their descendancy claims, or not even being agendized. So being able to have that descendancy claim gave voice to the EV because we didn't, we didn't have that pathway open until that point. So right after um, I got my descendancy claim, we had been sending information into Native Hawaiian Legal Corps, but we didn't have an agreement yet to have a case. And I think it was the day after I got my descendancy claim, I heard from um, Kawila and um, Camille Kalama from Native Hawaiian Legal Corps, and it just, it all opened up from there. And the day that the lawsuit was filed, and the, um, the developer and SHPD and the county received the paperwork. That day I was at phase six. I was there monitoring because of the phase nine case. And five Eva birds came and they flew over the burial preserve and they circled over it. I have a picture, it's actually my Facebook um, profile picture right now so I can remind myself. These five Eva birds flew over and I talked to Ele Makua Sam Ka'ai about it that day, and he said, oh, five, it's a full measure, it's a full lima. And the strategy, he said, 
just keep focusing on the strategy. They're showing you you're in the right direction. So that's how it started. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to Kawila to talk about how he got involved and a little bit about the case. Hi, so my name is David Kawila Copper. I'm originally from Hilo and now I live on Oahu where I'm an attorney for Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. I've been there for about nine years, going on 10. Um, and, and real briefly about us, and, and I think it will frame our discussion, is we practice in the general area of Native Hawaiian rights law, but to me what that means, and I think what's oft, often forgotten is, you know, attorneys are really servants, and we're just one of the many tools that community members and, and people like Noilani have to affect change, and, and we're definitely not the end all be all, but we, we are one avenue, and and that's how I view my work, and, and that work is, like I said, it's there's no real name for it. We can call it Native Hawaiian Rights Law, but it it really spans from, uh, for example, I, I do quite a bit of work for Kuleana land titles in quiet title cases, uh, access to uh, Lo'ikalo, to Kuleana lands, to uh, cultural and natural resources. A lot of our work is in administrative law, <clears throat> whether it, it, it's invalidating, you know, rules of state agencies like the DLNR or, you know, participating in public hearings. And, and that's all to say that really our work is just giving the voice to the community. And, and you know, I, I recall one case where a judge said, you know, I think your client is the smartest attorney in the room and she's not a client, she's just a farmer. And I said, judge, I know she's the smartest in the room. And, and that's why I think it's so important in cases like this to ensure that the community has a voice. And, and so when we're looking at Maui Lani phase six and our lawsuit, there, there is a couple things that from a legal standpoint that I wanted to remedy. And I know we're gonna hear a lot today about uh, rules that, uh, that entities should follow when Ivi Kupuna are discovered. And one of the main ones, of course, is that you go through a relevant, you know, whatever island you are on, you go to a burial council, and it's supposed to be this public process where descendants, where people with interest can be heard. Because again, these are the experts. It's not the attorneys, it's not an archeologist. Our, you know, for, for the many flaws that our laws do have, and recognizing that we are in a flaw system, uh, there are ways that the law recognizes that it is the descendants that are the experts, whether it's, you know, um, for example, there's administrative rules that recognize that landowners do not own EV. It, they hold it in trust for the descendants who should have a say in what should happen to them. We have uh, rules of evidence which recognize that there's such a thing called Kama Aina witness testimony, where normally, you would need an, a quote expert to testify about certain matters. Uh, you can have a community member who's knowledgeable uh, about history of a place, about practices, and their voice is treated like an expert. And, and really that's what I want to do. I am not an expert in this area, but I do have a passion, I think some knowledge as, you know, in regards to getting these voices heard and getting them treated with the weight that they deserve. So when it comes, uh, briefly, when it comes to the, our litigation, our case about uh, the Maui Lani Phase 6 project, one, one of the big legal flaws that I think is probably apparent to most people here is we have a project in an area known to contain um, numerous burial sites that the SHPD recognized back in 2007 to contain a significant number of pre-contact Native Hawaiian burial sites, but it is one person or one sub department within State Historic Preservation Division that is deciding the fate of these Iwi Kupuna, not the burial council and definitely not the community. And that was a, you know, a big red flag where, you know, the, the people who should be making the decisions or at least having significant input into what happens to our ancestors should be those descendants. And that's what the law recognizes in all its flaws. It recognizes that and, and uh, it simply wasn't followed in this case. And uh, you know, another aspect that was very alarming to us is, 
again, this project was in an area that everyone here knows, and I would say most people uh, in who live in Hawaii on any island know in, in the Puone sand dunes contain a significant number of burial sites, yet when there were studies done, um, miraculously only five Ivikupuno were found. And fast forward through just, you know, not even a substantial amount of grubbing and grading on the property, and, and there's evidence in this case that at least 180 Ivikupuna were disturbed. And again, this is sort of behind closed doors, uh, all approved by the State Historic Preservation Division. So that, that, that was a big motivation, I'd say, legally for us to bring this case. And I don't know if maybe it's a good time to speak about uh, just where we're at now. Um, so after filing this case, Judge Cardoza here on Maui in the Second Circuit Court, the Environmental Court, uh, halted the project, uh, at least for now, while you know he determined that there was not enough identification done to locate what are the sensitive areas that that contain or probably contain Ivi Kupuna, which should be uh, avoided. And I think this is just you know it's one important aspect when we talk about development in areas that have Ivi Kupuna. Is okay, what are places to avoid? You know, what are things that can be done to avoid harm to EV? But I think more importantly is uh, what should be looked at is a greater context of whether, you know, what is more important, trying to get a project through, trying to, I guess, co-mingle uh, practices and important sites with development, or, you know, at, at what point is the preservation of our ancestors going to be <laughs> just viewed as the most important thing and everything else development is sort of subservient to that. So I think our lawsuit is a definitely, in, our, our goal at least is a step in the right direction towards, you know, let's place more importance on EV Kupuna. But at, at some point, I think there needs to be a reframing of the law that, you know, what comes first is the people who are there first. And, and, we, and we're just, you know, we we should move we we should move forward with the understanding that they were there first and and appreciate all that they've contributed to our lives today and treat them with respect. So you know again this is I I hope one step in the right direction, but it really is people like Noelani and the people in this room that can hopefully get us to to that finish to the finish line where we want to be. The Ivi Kupuna contains the mana of our ancestors. Can you hear me? Sorry. Um, the mana of our ancestors. And that belongs to us as their descendants. And it's our right to, to experience that and to engage with that and to be guided by that. Um, and so I would encourage all of you, if you get a chance, you can call myself or Auntie Claire anytime and we'll go take you. We'll go take you in the sand dunes. We'll go on a huaka'i. Because I think it's really important to go put your feet on the aina and listen Listen with your feet, listen with your na'al, listen with your pu'uvai. See what the ancestors are trying to tell you because I know, um, you know, I wasn't that open to it at a certain point, but once they started coming, they come all the time now. And it's been foundational in strengthening who I am as a Kanaka Maoli and helping me understand what my kuleana is um, and giving me direction and giving me this in incredible, um, insatiable insatiable passion to protect them because I know that my health and well-being is nourished by them and the protection of of their right to exist where they are is part of the health and well-being of all of our people and it's part of the healing of the trauma that we have been through from colonialism imperialism dispossession of our land and assimilation so I really see the protection of Ivi Kupuna, not just about Ivi Kupuna, but about our whole identity as Kanaka Maoli and our right, our right to be who we are and to practice Malama Ivi Kupuna. Um, so that being said, you know, this phase six increment four is just one small part of Maui Lani Project District. It's actually a thousand acre project district in central Maui. Um, we've been asking the developer, Auntie Claire has been asking for years, Uncle Kiamoku when he was on the burial council, they all asked for years, how many EV have been disturbed? How many EV? And the developers and SHPD and the um, 
Archaeological Services Hawaii company just kept stalling. Oh, we're going to give you a number. We're going to give you a number. And in our in the mediation for our phase nine case, one of the things that was really good that came out of that is they finally admitted that there's 700 fine sites. This is an enormous amount of Ivi Kupuna who have been desecrated for years. And it really is all of our kuleana. And you know, aside from our, our um, legal pathways, that is like Kawila said, that's one pathway, but it's not the only pathway. Um, some of the other things we're doing uh, is we're working with the county. I feel so blessed that we have the new administration that we do because the council members have been so helpful. In fact, council member Shane Sinensi's, um one of his administrative assistants, Gina Flammer, is here today. Thank you for coming, Gina. Give this lady a round of applause, please. She, um, Gina and Shane have, uh, with the cooperation of the community and the collaboration of the community, have created a county archaeology position, which we've never had on Maui County before. So while well, we're going to talk about SHPD this afternoon and, and the HEVA that's happening over there, we're not waiting for SHP to get, SHPD to get their act together. We're going we're gonna to look at what we can do right here on Maui. Um, I believe Gina is starting to work on an archaeological protection um, ordinance, and we're going to look at how we can change the laws right here in the county. We've also been working with Joshua Cooper, who does a lot of work at the UN. So last month, uh, Malamaka Kanilua filed a urgent measure early warning document to the um, Commission on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, because we know that what's happening to our burials is racism. Nobody else's burials are being dug up. Just Kanaka Maoli. And we have to address it and we have to look at it that way. So we're looking towards the international community as well for, for a potential avenue for getting some remedy and relief. So it's never just one thing. It's, there's always a, a panorama of um, pathways that we can take. And if you wait for the kupuna to show you, you will get your sign about what you're supposed to do next and what is the next step and what is the next step. And then we can holo mua and we can, we can stop the heba and protect our evi. So, mahalo nui.